is this is about um, how to avoid divorce. I'm going to have to start. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I think I'm in trouble. I've been a true and faithful wife to every husband that I have. <laughs> I promised to devote my life through thick and thin, through good and bad. But only while this rule applies, what I decide shall be, shall be. And there no problem lies. <laughs> when Johnny led me up the aisle and with a loving, manly smile, promised he would have and hold me, I loved him then. But they never told me I'd have to iron eight shirts a week. What? <laughs> when, I asked, when I asked him for a word about this imposition on my valuable time, he said that this was what he meant by opting for the sacrament. <laughs> As a blunt instrument, the iron was great. John's sentence quickly changed to late. <laughs> my second love was handsome day. When first we met, he used to rave about the cute and charming way I loved to lie in bed all day and wait for meals and cups of tea prepared by Dave to come to me. One week past our honeymoon, I found that Dave had changed his tune. <laughs> Get up, he said, and bring me bacon, eggs and toast. Come on, you do have legs. <laughs> I went downstairs and laid a tray. I brought Dave's last meal up that day. I even brought an appetizer, grapefruit, laced with fertilizer. <laughs> Sliced thinly, chopped and barbecued, Dave flushed quite neatly down the loo. Uh, an optimist, I tried and tried, again became a blushing bride. With Lee, I cuddle all the day and let no chores get in my way, but then he said, this room's disgusting. Don't you ever do the dusting? I got a broom. I hit him. Hard. He's buried out there in the yard. Husband four is pushing daisies. Gardening? The man was crazy. I've tried again, but number five showed his weakness on a drive. When I drove through red traffic lights, he rudely said, that wasn't right. While he looked underneath the bonnet, I found the accelerator, stepped on it, and drove him into paradise. I know, I know, it wasn't nice. <laughs> so now I'm in an awful fix. I need to find mate number six. <laughs> I think perhaps a poet. <laughs> what I mean. We'd sing and rhyme and laugh and read, but he must never criticize my writing. Well, my sharp pen between his eyes will send him up to husband heaven. <laughs> and then I'll have to look for number seven. <laughs> I love your stuff. This is the last one I brought with me. This is the sad story of Michael. I don't know, girls, if you've ever been up with somebody who's got eyes for everybody else. Yes. <laughs> but I'm... Michael was an awful flirt. His charm was legendary. It hurt his steady girlfriend when she saw the way he always hoped to score. One day when night when when Mike was chatting up a girl called Anna, whose bra cut was 36 and double D, his girlfriend told him, Don't you see? If you go on, my plan is this. I'll have to shoot you. I won't miss. But Michael said, you won't, you know, you really love me, don't you know? And carried on to flirt some more. His girlfriend, feeling very sore, like Cupid, took a bow and arrow, aimed, shot, and his escape was narrow. Her shot did not go through his heart, but rather lower. He did smart, and now his voice is quite high-pitched. <laughs> his girlfriend seeing Anna. Bitch, says Michael, how was I to know that both the girls were by? And the moral of that is, a bitch in the hand is worth two birds in each other's bushes. <laughs> <laughs> So just for the record, I'm not a poet, I'm just a sober host. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you so much, Jen. That was absolutely wonderful. And again, definitely have to get the information for your uh, poetry nights. Yes. Every third Tuesday? Every third yeah, the third Tuesday of the month. It's in a rather nice bar. Like All right. Well, we'll have to do some sister open mic. Yes. Uh, yeah. Great. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Very